to Thursday, April 11th, 2024 is question period episode. You got Pierre Polyev, who's scheduled to appear in the House of Commons today. It's unknown whether Justin Trudeau will actually be there to do his job. There is a president or prime minister of another country. I don't know who the hell it is, is visiting Ottawa. So he's... Uh, might, he, he might have a Nazi in the gallery and give another standing ovation. Who actually knows anymore? But before we get into it, I do want to encourage everyone to smash like button, subscribe if you haven't yet already, before we get the show on the road. Uh, lots of exciting things happening here on House of Canada channel. This morning, on this morning's video, there was a sponsor, Private Internet Access. Super awesome. I'm glad that, uh, that they're uh, willing to sponsor videos on this channel now, as well as I just got news from my... Uh, my silver play button for House of Canada, just like the one right here for Mr. Sunshine Baby, uh, is, is being shipped. So I'll, I'm going to have two silver play buttons, and I'll mount them on the wall. It'll look nice and pretty. Very exciting, and I owe a lot of gratitude to you guys, the community, for subscribing and trusting me with 100 plus thousand subscribers and being a part of the community commenting on the live stream liking and engaging uh it's been it's been one hell of a ride and i think that we're just getting started and speaking of just getting started why don't we switch screens here and get into uh the statements by members so they have about five ten about ten minutes uh to get prepared before qp actually begins so in the meantime get yourselves your coffee get yourselves your water whatever it is that you want to do your lunch get uh, get situated i was late to start the stream because i was going through my pantry and uh taking some of my kids snacks she has more snacks but i don't usually eat bear paws my kid does and i'm hungry so i'm gonna eat <laughs> uh the dad tax i'm teaching my daughter taxes at a young age all right so without further ado uh let's switch screens and get into this qp here we go folks Donate, do, donor can save eight lives, enhancing the lives of up to 75 people through tissue donation. Currently about 1,300 people in Ontario are waiting for life-saving organ transplant. On April 7th, we celebrated Green Shirt Day to honor Logan Boulet, who became an organ donor following the tragic bus accident suffered by the Humboldt Broncos in 2018. Thanks to Logan and to all those who have made a generous donation of life. Merci aux bénévoles. Thank you to the volunteers at the Trillion Gift of Life Network. And thank you for their work. And also thanks to Can Canadian Blood Services for your continued awareness building initiatives. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Honourable Member from Calgary Forest Lawn. On behalf of Common Sense Conservatives, we wish all six across Canada a happy Sikh Heritage Month and a very happy Vasaki. To be a Sikh is to always courageously stand up for justice I thought it was and, Sikh. Help, and humbly serve society's most vulnerable. To be a beacon of hope and to be uplifting like a lighthouse, helping others to safety. To selflessly serve others above all else by the grace of God. Canada hosts the largest Sikh diaspora in the world, and we recognize the immense contributions of Sikhs in Canada through their seva. Organizations like the Dishmish Culture, Culture Centre in Calgary, the Gurnanik Food Bank in Surrey, or Khalsa Aid, who truly embody the teachings of the Khalsa. For generations, Sikhs have added the wealth of their history and traditions to our communities, strengthening the bonds of freedom and prosperity that have made Canada so great. Conservatives share the deep-rooted values of faith, family, and freedom with the Sikh community. Happy Sikh Heritage Month and Vesakhi Dian Lak Lak Vadaiya. Happy Sikh Heritage Month. The Honourable Member from Scarborough Agent Court. Mr. Speaker, recently Scarborough faced the loss of a beloved educator and community leader. The news of Jay Williams' death at the age of 40 is a tragic loss for the community. Jay Williams was an educator with the Toronto District School Board, most recently working with the TDSB Centre for Excellence for Black Student Achievement to develop strategies to dismantle anti-black racism in schools. He grew up in the Melbourne area and will be remembered as a beloved Trudeau teacher at sense. several middle schools across Scarborough. As a teacher, he focused on making the classroom <clears throat> Remind everyone, smash the like button. Let's try and get students. more people in here. We got under 100 likes. See if we can get to 250 before um, to thousands of teenagers statements by members is over. My condolences go out to Jay's family, including his mother, Senator Paulette Sr., and his father, Ron Williams. He will truly be missed. 
The Honourable Member from Winnipeg South Centre. Mr. Speaker, today marks World Parkinson's Awareness Day. In Canada alone, more than 100,000 people live with the disease. Hundreds of thousands more Canadians who are the friends, family and caregivers of those living with Parkinson's are deeply impacted too. Recently, my own family suffered a great loss with the passing of my Uncle Robert, my dad's brother, following a 20-year-long courageous battle with Parkinson's. Last week, my colleague, the member from Milton and I, joined his dad, Joe, my cousin David, Tim Hag of U-Turn Parkinson's, Kyle Connor of the Winnipeg Jets and others, to raise awareness as the Jets played in front of a sold-out home crowd. Thanks in large part to the leadership of Kevin Donnelly and Mark Chipman from the Jets organization, nearly $100,000 was raised at that game to help U-Turn Parkinson's deliver services with a focus on physical activity to support those impacted. I am proud that U-Turn Parkinson's operates in my riding of Winnipeg South Centre. I am incredibly grateful to the Winnipeg Jets and people like Adam's dad Joe and my uncle Robert for their courage and commitment to ensuring more Canadians learn about this debilitating disease. Thank you. The Honourable member from Renfrew, Nipissing, Pembroke. Mr. Speaker, as members of this House, we're all given the remarkable gift of having our words etched in time. I believe the highest honour we can bestow upon someone is to say their name in this House. I rise today to speak of my dear friend and longest serving staff member, Malcolm Montgomery, who passed away in November after 31 years of service to Parliament. He was my first campaign chair and a big reason a riding held by Liberals for over 80 years fell to the upstart of the Canadian Alliance. Malcolm put in long hours and put up with a demanding boss because he was filled with passion. He was passionate about politics, policy and parliament. He was passionate about Canada, Canadians, our history. He was passionate about his community, his friends and above all his family, his wife Debbie, his children Gord, Cameron and Neil. To meet Malcolm was to experience the full force of his enthusiasm for life. Malcolm, while you're no longer with us here, this house will remember you eternally. Here, here. The Honourable Member for Milton. Ever since my dad Joe's Parkinson's diagnosis, he's made it his personal mission to improve the lives of Canadians living with Parkinson's disease. And when he moved to Winnipeg, he met the legendary Tim Haig from U-Turn. They use physical activity pro programs to improve the daily lives of people living with Parkinson's disease. My dad's also a huge Winnipeg Jets fan, and it turns out the Jets' top scorer, Kyle Connor, also has a family connection to Parkinson's disease. So through the leadership of Kyle, Kevin Donnelly, Mark Chipman, Holy shit, just like clockwork every, every single day. The Winnipeg Jets supported you turn oh my God. with their 50-50 raffle draw last week. 11-11, make a wish. The MP from Winnipeg South Centre to watch the Jets clinch their playoff spot. Mm -hmm. And my buddy even lent me his favourite Timo Solani jersey and participated in the check presentation of about $100,000 to you turn Parkinson's. Right. So today I'm wishing everybody in the PD community a productive and happy World Parkinson's Day. And I hope the advocacy continues throughout April. To Tim Hag and you turn thanks for everything that you do for people living with Parkinson's. And to the Jets, thanks Thanks for being awesome corporate sports citizens and good luck in the playoffs. The Honourable Member for Bose. Mr. Speaker, after eight years, the Bloc Liberal Costly Coalition is not worth the cost. They continue to show their contempt for farmers by radically increasing the carbon tax and by voting to amend our common sense bill, C-234. From the beginning, this government has shown Canadians that agriculture just isn't a priority for them. You know, for me, it's very simple. No farmers, no food. Farmers are being hurt by an ever-increasing carbon tax. It hurts their ability to heat their buildings, dry their grain, and feed our cities. Government taxes and regulations are to blame. Carbon pricing in Quebec adds to the burden of expenses that producers must bear. As we saw in the Journal de Montréal this morning, unfortunately, it's not just the carbon tax that's crushing our farmers. It's also this government's inaction when it comes to improving support programs for farmers. The Conservatives will continue to fight for farmers. And we'll start with uh, supporting the passage of Bill C-234 in its original form to lower the cost of food and keep our farmers in business. The Honourable Member from Saskatoon Greenwood. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. This government just slapped Canadians with a 23% carbon tax increase on April 1st. They did this while food banks are servicing record number of hungry Canadians and farmers are struggling to keep up with crippling taxes. 
This government needs to pass Bill C-234 in its original form to remove the carbon tax on farmers to help bring down the cost of food for all Canadians. Conservatives have sent a letter to the Prime Minister with three demands to fix the budget. Common sense Conservatives will not agree to support the budget unless Liberals axe the tax, build homes and cap spending with dollar-for-dollar dollar rule to bring down the interest rates and inflation. The government must find in-dollar savings for every dollar of spending. This Prime Minister is not worth the cost. The Honourable Member from Labrador. Speaker, as you know, I'm a proud Labradorian and Canadian, and this year marks a significant milestone as we pay tribute to the Labrador flag. It's 50 year legacy, a testament to our shared identity and resilience as Labradorians. It is with deep appreciation we commend Michael and Patricia Martin of Cartwright Labrador, who 50 years ago had innovation and foresight to create the enduring symbol of Labrador pride. Since its inception, the Labrador flag has transcended, transcended boundaries, embodying unity, remembrance and celebration of Labradorians across the globe. Its iconic design and vibrant colours serve as a constant reminder of our collective heritage and the unwavering spirit of Labradorians. So today, we rejoice in 50 years of the Labrador flag. Labradorians join me in thanking Pat and Mike Martin for this wonderful gift and to say, fly the Labrador flag with pride. Yeah. The Honourable Member from Churchill, Kiwatani, Askey. The nightmare in Gaza continues. Over 33 Palestinians have been killed. Over 14,500 children. Families have gathered e for Eid. They've gathered in the rubble, in hunger, mourning their loved ones who've been killed. Just last week, we were horrified by Israel's killing of seven workers with World Central Kitchen, including one Canadian. More than 200 aid workers have been killed by Israel. It is clear the Netanyahu far-right government will continue the killing in large part because of the complicity and the empty words of countries like ours. We are witnessing a dystopian nightmare that is all too real. AI drones, cold-blooded calculations of how many innocent civilians it's okay to kill at one time. And now we hear former Prime Minister Harper heads up one of these AI firms used by Israel. We're also hearing about Canadian tax-deductible charities that are fueling the war on Gaza. Canada must end its complicity on all fronts. It starts with recognizing Palestine as a state, including full membership at the UN, bringing in a real two-way arms embargo. It means taking a stand against genocide and standing up for peace and justice. The Honourable Member for Cynthia saint pegot Mr. Speaker, Quebec places a strong All value right, on folks, its relationship we're going to be starting with Taiwan. Here shortly. Last December, we were able to highlight the if opening of an office If you haven't yet, there's almost a thousand people in here. There's quite a few likes that are lacking, this so fascinating I'd like to nation, encourage everyone which to is take this time right now to smash that like button. Particularly semiconductors. <clears throat> and uh, our metropolis, which a great independence-minded premier, Bernard Landry, saw as being a future pole in this same field. The Bloc Québécois unreservedly supports Taiwan's entry into the Trans-Pacific Partnership. Although we have and continue to have, we've had and continue to have reservations about the content of this massive trade agreement, any nation wishing to be part of an agreement of this nature should be able to do so, so long as it meets the membership criteria. Another great uh, uh, independence-minded Quebec Premier, Jacques Parizeau, was fond of saying that the size of a country didn't matter as long as it was part of a large market. This little island will be an invaluable asset in the global supply chain. It's a win-win situation. The Honourable Member from North Orkanagan, Sushwap. Mr. Speaker, after eight years, this Prime Minister has shamelessly delivered record high deficits, driving up inflation and causing sky-high interest rates. His government has doubled rent, mortgage payments and down payments. Food banks received a record $2 million in a single month last year, and a million more are expected to use food banks this year. He has added more to the national debt than all previous prime ministers combined. While life has gotten worse for Canadians, this PM is spending more than ever. Now, a leading economist says that rate cuts may be delayed because of high government spending. 
We saw that this week when the Bank of Canada held its rate in efforts to maintain its policy of quantitative tightening. Canadians are seeing this Prime Minister is not worth the cost. Will the Prime Minister cap his spending with dollar-for-dollar dollar rule and bring down interest rates and inflation, or will he continue to make Canadians pay for his failures? The Honourable Member for Laval-les-Îles. Mr. Speaker, Richard Ibrahim, with the help of Nicolas Abou Faisal, who is president of the Gathering of Industrialists in Zalé and the Becca, are both perfect examples of humanitarian service in their country. These are men who have done great work for the environment. They've planted 128,000 trees, Mr. Speaker, to protect the environment, and they will continue to plant more. Richard Ibrahim and Mr. And Nicolas Abou Faisal are philanthropists who work to further humanitarian aid. They support widows and orphans. They pay the hospital bills for the underprivileged, and they offer medical equipment to regional hospitals who help those who need it most, most without having to pay. Their creative and altruistic spirit has made them known. For Canada, Lebanon, I, I thank both of them. Thank you. Questions or how? Oral, Oral questions. Questions or how? Honorable Melissa Lanceman. Here we go. We already know that the Prime Minister is not worth the cost, and after eight years, this Prime Minister is no longer even listening to Canadians. A 23% carbon tax hike in the face of Canadians who can't afford to eat. Yesterday, this House passed a Conservative common sense motion calling on him to convene an emergency televised carbon tax meeting with all 14 premiers. The Prime Minister is hiding, but maybe someone over there can tell us what day will the televised carbon tax meeting be. Government House Leader. Speaker, today we are debating Bill C-50, the Sustainable Jobs Act, which the Royal Bank of Canada says there are 400,000 of to come to Canadians if we were just to unlock the kind of prosperity envisaged in this very progressive piece of legislation. Instead, the Conservatives put forward 20,000 amendments generated by wow. artificial intelligence. The Robo Caucus needs to stop its robo member from Thornhill. It's false, and that wasn't an answer. Canadians need relief and not more liberal taxes. 70% of Canadians are now saying so. One in 10 people in Toronto are now relying on a food bank, and more than half of Canadians are $200 away from missing their bills. If they aren't going to listen to Canadians, if they aren't going to give us a date, perhaps the, uh, the member can tell us what channel will the carbon tax meeting be on. <laughs> The Honourable Government House Leader. Mr. Speaker, the channel they should be plugged in, I don't know what it is, but it is the reality channel, because back here in the real world, there are real jobs at stake, there are real opportunities at stake, there is affordability at stake, and these members, the robo you guys caused the robo amendments, in the way of, of opportunity and the way of progress and clean technology in this country, they need to get out of the way, stop the gatekeeping, let Canadians create the wealth that we yeah, need to yeah. succeed. The Honourable Member from Thornhill. Once again, he didn't answer the question, and I'm not really sure what that was, but if he won't listen to Canadians, and they won't listen to their NDP caucus, the Prime Minister won't listen to his successor, Mark Carney, who also wants him to meet with Premiers. They won't give us a date. They won't give us a time. They won't tell us what channel to watch. The Prime Minister won't even show up here and answer to this motion. The Prime Minister is being defiant when Canadians are lining up at food banks in record numbers. What are you covering for? The Honourable President of the Treasury Board. Mr. Speaker, the Prime
Prime Minister has repeatedly said he is all ears. If there is a better plan, put it on the table. Premier Mo himself said this was the most cost-effective plan, yes, and that's why our government will keep yes. going with it while maintaining our triple A credit rating, while maintaining the lowest debt to GDP ratio in the G7, and while maintaining historically low unemployment. Mr. Speaker, on this side of the House, we will always vote with Canadians and support them along the way. Thank I you. Agree. The Honourable Member for Belchasse, Lizzie Tremelevy. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. After eight years of this Prime Minister, we've suffered a passport crisis, an increase in violent crime, the doubling of rent costs, millions of people going to food banks, and criminals in our very homes. That's a great record. Quebecers are suffering because of this government's mismanagement, and now it's invading provincial jurisdictions. Will the Prime Minister listen to the Premier of Quebec, who is asking to finally mind his own business? The Honourable Minister for Public Services and Procurement. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Six. Six affordable housing units. That's what the Leader of the Opposition built when he was Minister for Housing uh, throughout Canada and throughout his mandate with the collaboration of the Government of Quebec and Hand in Hand with Municipals. 8,000 units will be built over the next few weeks. I would like to invite my colleague, the member for Bichas Lille de Malévis, to uh, come with me to visit a building project in Lévis, where there will be 23 affordable housing units. Just for that unit and that project, the Honourable Member for Bichas Lille de Malévis. To the already long list of failures of this Liberal government, we can add a total slackness in the management of public finances and the squandering of Quebec's money. The government spends Canadians' money indiscriminately. It has no budgetary discipline over the past eight years, and as a result, the, the debt is doubling. It has not balanced a budget, and then it wants to manage the province's affairs and lecture them. Quebec Premier François Legault is adamant that this federal government should finally mind its own business. Will the government listen to him, yes or no? The Honourable Leader of the Government in the House of Commons. Mr. Speaker, let us talk about a former Premier of Quebec, Mr. Charest, with whom this very member sat and voted for a pollution pricing system. And so I think that the hypocrisy from that side is rather striking, especially in a context where today we're talking about 400,000 potential jobs in Canada, thanks to green technology, thanks to our new economy. That member is against these kind of opportunities in battery factories in Quebec, for example. On this side of the House, we are for opportunities for Quebec, as Mr. Speaker. The Honourable Member for salaberry sur roy the housing issue proves that the federal government must be prevented from interfering in Quebec's area of jurisdiction. When the federal government decides where the money goes, Quebecers get done dirty. CMHC figures prove it in black and white. Since the creation of the federal housing strategy in 2019, do you know, Mr. Speaker, how much of the funding Quebec has received? When is the federal government that chooses projects? 6.7%, Mr. Speaker. 6.7% isn't even a third of our fair share, Mr. Speaker. Will the government stop shortchanging Quebecers and transfer all the housing money unconditionally to Quebec? The Honourable Minister for Public Services and Procurement. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Let us, we've already talked about the six housing units of the Conservative leader. So now let's talk about the 8,000 affordable housing units, thanks to the leadership and the partnership between us and the province of Quebec and various municipalities in Quebec. The member for Celebrity sur roi in her riding, is no doubt aware of the Pédalo housing project with 48 accessible and affordable housing units that are adapted to climate change. That will bring real difference for dozens of people in her riding. I would be happy to go to that housing unit uh, project with her to show her how important our collaboration is with Quebec and for the people of her riding. The Honourable Member for Celebrity sur roi Quebecers constitute 20% of the population of Canada, and we receive 6.7% of federal investment in housing when it's the federal government that chooses projects. So it doesn't need, you don't need to be a math whiz, Mr. Speaker, to figure out that we are being absolutely ripped off. Since 2019, the money has been used mainly to fund projects outside of Quebec.
We are in the midst of a housing crisis, Mr. Speaker, and we are paying through our taxes to house Ontarians while we can no longer afford in Quebec to pay the rent here at home. Do you now understand, Mr. Speaker, why we need to keep the federal government as far away as, as possible from our exclusive jurisdiction over housing? The Honourable Minister for Public Services and Procurement. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I understand that the Bloc Québécois perhaps doesn't appreciate good collaboration between the Quebec government and the federal government, but we've signed an agreement just a few weeks ago, an 8,000 affordable housing unit agreement, which is the biggest investment in affordable housing ever seen in Quebec, in all of Quebec's history. And that is because the government of Quebec and the federal government are working together in order to allow Quebecers and other, and other Canadians access to affordable housing. The Honourable Member for Rosemont La Petite Patrie. Mr. Speaker, Montreal has seen its highest rent increase in uh, 30 years. A true crisis that is preventing Montreal from finding a roof under which to live. And what is the Liberal government's solution to this? To build only 35% of affordable and social housing units in the Wellington Basin. So... That means offering two-thirds of housing that is not affordable. Simple question. Why use public land to build housing that Quebecers cannot afford? The Honourable Minister for Public Services and Procurement. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Very happy to hear this question from my colleague. It shows once again the contrast that exists between this government and the previous government. In 2017, we implemented our first national strategy with regards to housing in our country's history, so that we can, which is a contrast to the Conservative leader who, when he was housing minister during his entire term and throughout the country, only built six affordable, Mr. Speaker, six affordable housing units. <laughs> The Honourable Member from London Fanshawe. The women and men in the Canadian Armed Forces have faced a military housing shortage for decades. Under Liberals and Conservatives, military housing has now been built and existing units are falling into disrepair. And now the Liberals want our Armed Forces to wait another two years before they even start building homes. This delay is unacceptable. Why is the Minister delaying building urgently needed homes for the men and women who serve our country? Yeah. Honourable Minister for National Defence. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker, and, and, and making sure that we provide adequate supports, particularly for housing and child care, is, is absolutely essential to, for us to support the men and women who serve in Canadian Armed Forces. And that's why, Mr. Speaker, in our recently released defence policy, we've included a substantial investment of over $300 million to build housing. But, Mr. Speaker, that work has begun and will continue apace. And I look forward to working with all members of the Defence Committee as we bring forward important new initiatives to support the men and women of the Canadian Armed Forces. Yeah, now that it's hit all the media, the that Capel. <laughs> they can't Mr. afford Speaker, shit. The Prime Minister is They're just not on. worth the cost, and now his carbon tax scheme is completely falling apart. First, his own budget watchdog proved conclusively that most Canadians are worse off even with the rebate. Then he was humiliated into granting a partial carve-out because his Liberal MPs were sick of the backlash they were getting from their voters. And now a majority of Premiers are demanding an emergency carbon tax conference to put forward better ideas than his punishing tax. If he's so sure that his carbon tax is so good, then why does he, why does he just sit down and listen to the Premier? The Honourable Minister for Natural Resources and Energy. Mr. Speaker, later today we will be voting to advance the Sustainable Jobs Act. It is a critically important act in the context of growing an economy that will thrive in a low-carbon future. It will ensure that workers and environmental organizations have a seat at the table when we are discussing Canada's green economic plan. The Conservatives have obstructed at every turn, include in introducing 20,000 robo-amendments. We are building a strong economy for the future. The, co the Conservatives by, by contrast, are, are engaging in legislative vandalism. Before I, before I pass on the floor to the Honourable Member from Regina Capella, I'll ask all members, please only the members who do have, uh, who are recognised by the Speaker, to 
uh, to let their opinions be known. The honourable member from Regina Capel. Oh, Mr. Speaker, none of that is true. But what is true is that yesterday, in a historic vote, a majority of MPs demanded that the Prime Minister sit down and just listen to the Premiers. It's baffling to understand why he's so afraid of meeting with them. It's not like they're going to ask him to put together IKEA furniture or help them move. They just want to put forward better ideas than hiking prices on everything. Yes. What is he so afraid of? Is it Doug? Is it Blaine? I know Scott Moe, Mr. Speaker. He's a really nice guy. Why doesn't the Prime Minister just meet with him? Oh, Andrew Shear is an underrated troll. Mr. Speaker, Scott Moe said he sat down and poured over the data and could not possibly find a more effective way to compact, com compact GHG emissions than this government's policy on pricing pollution. Regina Capel. If he won't stand up for the workers at Regina Capel, we will, Mr. Speaker. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The Honourable Member from Regina Leuven. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. And I'll invite the House Leader to come out to Regina and Scott Moe and I can have a beer and we can figure out what Scott really said about the carbon tax. Just last week, this Prime Minister raised the carbon tax by 23%. That increased the price of gas, groceries and home heating for all Canadians. Mr. Speaker, I am unsure of why this Prime Minister is so scared to meet with all the Premiers. Six, seven, eight Premiers want to meet with the Prime Minister and see what he has to say about his flagship carbon tax policy. Why won't he listen, or does he just not care? Yeah. The Honourable Minister for Women and Gender Equality. Mr. Speaker, let's talk about caring and young people, if we might, and affordability. Young people said they needed a break on interest and student loans. We did that. Kids getting out of school, home savings account, which 500,000 young people now have, so they can save towards their first home. And now rent payments will build rental history, credit history, because when you pay rent, it should count. Mr. Speaker, young people have asked, we have answered. The question is, what do you have to say? What are you going to cut? Are you going to cut these measures? The Honourable Member, I'm sorry, thank you for reminding me, uh, Members, that I, all questions should come through the Chair and not directly to other Members. The Honourable Member from Regina Leuven. One of the first things we're going to cut is about 70 or 80 Liberal MPs. <laughs> Of jobs. I believe they'll never own a home under this government. It's embarrassing, Mr. Speaker. Canadians used to be able to pay off a home in 25 years. Now it takes 25 years to save to even afford a down payment. Yeah, this Prime crazy. Minister refuses to listen to our Premiers. If he's so proud of his carbon tax, will the coward of the county come out of his house and actually meet with Premiers? <laughs> I'd like to remind all members uh, to, uh, and as, this, as the speaker has, uh, has uh, made this point before, it's important not to call into question uh, any member's uh, courage. The Honourable Minister for Seniors, uh, uh, Labour and Seniors. I think, I think Mr. Speaker, on this, on this issue, it is very important to list the constituents. I'd like to quote Danielle from Foothills. She said, I do my family's taxes, so I know we got $808.50. <laughs> We get an extra little bump for me and my husband because we live in a rural environment. And when I go back and I look at what I spent last year in carbon taxes because I was working from home, I wasn't commuting, my gas bills were way down, and even the amount of tax that I paid on my home heating bills were principally natural gas for where I live. I would say that I probably ended up better off with that transfer. You should listen to constituents like Danielle of Foothills, Alberta. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. The Honourable Member for Megonti Clérable. The Prime Minister has spent the last two weeks of reminding Canadians of the disasters he has caused over the last eight years. Passports, immigration, late job insurance payments, inflation, interest rates, and of course the doubling of rent costs. And the list is very long. And yesterday his Liberal members voted against the Conservative motion that was adopted by this House to uh, have a meeting with all Premiers. The last meeting 
was in 2016, will he or will he not call this meeting? Or does he prefer to continue destroying everything through interference without consulting the provinces? What is he scared of? The Honourable Minister for Innovation. On this side of the House, Mr. Speaker, um, um, we act. On the other hand, Canadians hear that there is absolutely no action. And no action or inaction is not a strategy. Inaction is not a plan. Inaction is not an option, Mr. Speaker. On this side of the House, Mr. Speaker, we have a plan for Canadians. We will invest in a greater number of housing units. We will invest in childcare, Mr. Speaker. We will invest in jobs. We will invest in growth. Mr. Speaker, will let them create their slogans while we will continue to actually work for Canadians. The Honourable Member for Bigantic Clérable. After eight years of this government, let us talk about its record, Mr. Speaker. Housing costs have doubled. Immigration waiting times are never ending. Over 800,000 Quebecers are using food banks every single month. Our streets are less and less safe. Violent crime is on the up. And bad news, Mr. Speaker, the Prime Minister now wants to impose his incompetence on the provinces. It's like giving the key to our house to the very vandals who have just ransacked it. Will the Prime Minister finally admit that he has absolutely no skill in managing his own government and that he should, for once, mind his own business? The Honourable Minister for the Environment and Climate Change. Mr. Speaker, we could talk about vandals, but let us talk about climate vandals who are just on the other side of the House, Mr. Speaker. The member on the other side wants to know what the benefit of carbon pricing is. It's not difficult. All he has to do is look and speak to the member right behind him, who was part of the very first government in North America to price carbon, because it's the right thing to do, Mr. Speaker. It's the right thing to do for the economy. It's the right thing to do in fighting climate change. It's the right thing to do for Canadians. This guy is just <clears throat> proving to everybody Saint that he's an activist, an extremist, the and he's unfit to be in it. reiterated the Quebec government's minimum demands. Nothing spectacular, no exaggerations. She's not asking for full powers in immigration, just a bare minimum. Fair distribution of asylum seekers between the provinces. Reimbursement, reimbursement of reception costs and adequate funding for francisation. I don't think that's not too much to ask. Will the government respond positively to Quebec's demands, or will we end up with yet another liberal squabble? Because they seem to love that. The Honourable Minister for Immigration, Refugees and Citizenship. Mr. Speaker, what I've agreed uh, with Minister Fréchette when I met her two weeks ago would be that we would use our full powers in our respective fields of jurisdiction under the Canada-Quebec agreement in a reasonable and reasoned way. That is what I ex expect to do with her over the next few months. Canadians and Quebecers will benefit from this. The Honourable Member for Saint-Jean. Mr. Speaker, the discussions are going so well that the Quebec government is thinking of holding a referendum on immigration. The truth is that Quebec, uh, that Quebec is so fed up of being laughed in the face by this government that it is thinking of talk, turning to the people. And given the federal government's incompetence in managing its responsibilities, we all know that things would go a lot better if Quebec had full powers. Will the minister respond to Minister Frichette's very reasonable requests, or would he prefer to wait for the entire population of Quebec to express its views on this federal government's incompetence when it comes to immigration? The Honourable Minister for Immigration, Refugees and Citizenship. And Mr. Speaker, there's not a country in the world that would give full powers to someone else. What I have agreed upon with Minister Frechette is that we would follow our respective responsibilities in our respective fields of jurisdiction to best serve Quebecers. And that's I will do, and that's what the Minister will do as well. The Honourable Member for Drummond. The French Prime Minister is visiting Canada and Quebec. Oh, what happened? Just like clockwork. To express its views on this world that would jurisdiction to best serve yeah. Quebecers. And that's, I will do, and that's what the minister will do as well. The Honourable Member for Drummond. The French Prime Minister is visiting Canada folks, Quebec. I got one gig we all know the uh, special ties that Quebec has with this great country, the cradle of human rights and secularism. At a time when monarchists are proudly singing God Save the King, when the tragic history of Acadians is being trampled underfoot, I believe there is an opportunity to remind France that we still share some democratic values. 
will the government undertake not to contribute in any way, either directly or indirectly, to the challenge to Bill 21 on the secular nature, secular nature rather, of the Quebec state? The Honourable Minister for Justice. Thank you, Ms. Mr. Speaker. As I have already mentioned a number of times, as has already been mentioned by the Prime Minister himself, with the current situation with Bill 21, when the situation reaches the Supreme Court, were it to re arrive to the Supreme Court, we'll be here to intervene to defend the Canadian Charter of Rights and Freedoms and to defend rights like the rights of free speech, the right to equality and religious rights. Thank you. The Honourable Member from Lambton, Kent, Middlesex. Speaker, after eight years of this NDP Liberal government, this Prime Minister is not worth the cost. But don't take my word for it. Heather from Newbury writes, people need the cost of living brought under control now. And Carol from Strathroy says, one more tax will take us down. We're already struggling. To the average Canadian, the cost of the carbon tax on gas, groceries, home heating, farmers and families is punishing, not progress. So will the Prime Minister axe the tax on farmers and help make food cheaper by passing Bill C-234 in its original form. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. The Honourable Minister for Labour and Seniors. All right, I thank the uh, Honourable Member for that question. And I, I would allow Danielle from Foothills to continue with her comments. She also added, I would say that I probably better ended, off, ended up better off with that transfer. She also said, and so I think a lot of people would be of that view that if you are going to implement some kind of revenue-neutral carbon pricing, that's probably not a bad way of doing it. Now, these are the words of Danielle from, from Foothills. I'm happy to inform Danielle that two and a half years later, since she made that comment, it is now up to $1,800 for a family of four in Alberta. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Member from Lambton, Kent, Middlesex. Well, Mr. Speaker, even the NDP Liberal Environment Chair admitted that the carbon tax has no impact on climate change. Hmm. And yet, just last week, the Prime Minister increased the carbon tax by 23%, driving up the cost of gas, groceries, and home heating. If farmers cannot afford to grow food, you have failed as a government. And let me remind everyone, no farms, no food. So will the Prime Minister help bring the cost of food down for Canadians, axe the tax on farmers, and pass Bill C-234 in the original Honourable Government House Leader. Mr. Speaker, instead of opposing battery plants, instead of standing up against sustainable jobs, that member and her caucus should remember that farmers have the vast majority of the fuels they use, which are tax-exempt uh, right. under the pollution pricing strategy. Farmers in this country are supported uh, big time by adjustment policies because they know more than anyone that climate change is a reality. And with respect to Bill C-234, that member should walk down to the front bench and tell her government, tell her opposition House Leader that he should call Bill 234 and we'll resolve it. Here, here. The Honourable Member from Dauphin, Swan River, Nipawa. This NDP Liberal government is just not worth the cost. Last week, the Prime Minister increased the carbon tax by 23%, driving up the cost of gas, groceries and home heating. But on Tuesday, the Liberal Environment Chair revealed no, there is no proof the carbon tax reduces emissions. Quote, there is no data specifically stating the price on carbon resulted in an X amount of reduction in greenhouse gas emissions. End quote. Now that, the, now that the carbon tax scam has been exposed by a Liberal, will the Prime Minister finally axe the tax? The Honourable Minister for Energy and sorry, Thank you. For Natural Speaker, Resources and Energy. We are on this side of the House are focused on making life more affordable for Canadians, but also on fighting climate change. The, the PBO and 200 economists across this country have been very clear. Eight out of ten Canadian families get more money back. It works disproportionate to income. Even the Conservatives actually used to know this before they got collective amnesia. Every one of the members on that side of the House ran in 2021 on a promise to put in place carbon pollution. The hypocrisy that comes from that side of the House is unbelievable. <laughs> I don't think anybody. None of it. 
in their right mind the is believing. The First Nations and Inuit have been anymore. neglected by successive Fantastic. liberal and conservative governments for years. They have underfunded infrastructure for First Nations by $350 billion. Wow. For Inuit, the gap is $75 billion more. Dollars. The liberals committed to closing this gap by 2030, but they are nowhere near their target. This means no more. This means more moldy homes, more crumbling schools, and more contaminated water. When will the liberals fulfill their obligations to First Nations and Inuit by closing this infrastructure gap? The Honorable Parliamentary Secretary to the Minister of Crown of Indigenous Services. Rather. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and I thank the Honourable Member for that very important question and for her advocacy in this House. We thank the Assembly of First Nations for their partnership. We actually worked together with them on this report, and we welcome the important recommendations that it brought forward. We know that decades of underinvestment and discrimination have led to this infrastructure deficit, which is indeed a crisis for Indigenous peoples across this country. Our government has put a stop to this, with record investments by dramatically increasing up to 1,100 per cent since 2016. We are taking action to close that infrastructure gap, and we will not stop until it is done. The Honourable Member from Skeena, Bulkley Valley. Mr. Speaker, there are many residential school survivors and family members of murdered and missing Indigenous women and girls in British Columbia who are non-status. And this week, they're learning that their access to counselling is being cut off because the Liberals, like the Conservatives before them, are underfunding First Nations health. These are community members who've experienced serious trauma and for whom counselling is a key part of their healing journey. Why is this government denying survivors access Access to critical counseling. Yes. The Honourable Minister for Crown and Indigenous Relations. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and I'd like to thank my colleague for that very important question. Violence against Indigenous women, girls, twist spirit, and gender diverse people must be put to an end, Mr. Speaker. After the previous government dragged their feet for years, we called a national inquiry. We have an action plan that is co-developed with Indigenous partners. We made progress. For example, we built uh, 12 new cell towers along the Highway of Tears in British Columbia, new shelters for Indigenous women, supporting frontline Indigenous victim services, 36 Indigenous-led policing services, Mr. Speaker, and we will continue to do more. The Honourable Member from Kitchener, South Hesper. Mr. Speaker, Canadians know better than to trust Conservatives' failed policies. On this side of the House, <laughs> our government is focused on... She believes it so jobs, much including in that she's reading a script word technology. for word. Last week, in my riding of Kitchener, mm -hmm. South Hesper, I was pleased to be with our government when we announced new measures from the upcoming Budget 2024 to secure Canada's AI advantage. Mr. Speaker, can the President of the Treasury Board please update this House on our government's announcement on AI? Good question. The Honourable um, President of the Treasury Board. Mr. Speaker, I thank the Honourable Member for her hard work. Last week, our government announced $2.4 billion to support artificial intelligence across this country. That means more infrastructure for AI researchers. That means more innovative AI solutions for small and medium-sized businesses. That means the creation of an AI institute. And that means the responsible use of AI across the country. Unlike the Conservatives who deny science, we will always support an innovative economy. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, after eight years of this Liberal government, life is more expensive and Quebecers are paying the price. Housing costs have doubled and lineups at food banks are longer than ever. Quebecers are struggling to feed themselves, and it's because of this Prime Minister's insistence on interfering in provincial jurisdictions. It's obvious this Liberal government isn't worth the cost. Will the Prime Minister finally withdraw from provincial jurisdictions so that Quebec can undo the damage? The Honourable Minister for Innovation. We will take no lessons from the Conservatives. We've created more housing in this country. We have a plan. We have a plan to create prosperity. What do we have on the other side is slogans. People at home know that slogans don't create housing, slogans don't create jobs, and slogans don't create prosperity. On this side of the House, we're going to focus on issues that matter to Canadians and let Conservatives invent more slogans. 
Canadians know what side they're on and we're with them. The Honourable Member from Mamanique. Eight years of this Liberal government has given us a broken immigration system, an unsustainable cost of living, sky-high crime rates, and millions of Canadians who are suffering. This prime minister causes problems in every area of Canadian life, and he's also intruding on provincial jurisdictions. Quebecers have clearly understood. This prime minister is not worth the cost. Can the prime minister stop spreading his incompetence and just mind his own business? The Honourable Minister for Public Services and Procurement. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Minding our business means investing in daycare and housing and high-speed internet. It's also about investing so that the children in the riding of my colleague have their bellies full. We announced an investment that's going to help 400,000 children, hundreds of which live in his riding, to go to school with full bellies so that they can learn and develop to their full potential. Unfortunately, they're going to vote against it when the budget is tabled. After eight long years, the Prime Minister is not worth the cost. About food banks no longer meet demand. The cost of rents like and mortgages an doubled. The dream the of first home system. ownership <clears throat> is nearly impossible for our young people. Instead of for eight years, it's invaded provincial jurisdictions, and Quebecers' own. quality of life is worse. Instead of imposing his incompetence on the province, could he please just mind his own business? The Honourable Leader of the Government. Monsieur le Président... Mr. Speaker, this member, like all conservative MPs in Quebec, I would like them to talk to their leader because they're getting in the way of 400,000 possible jobs thanks to green technology. Like in Quebec, the battery plant will create thousands of jobs. This member knows full well that Quebec will prosper in a green economy. They should inform their leader and stop getting in the way of progress. The Honourable Member for chicoutimi Mr. Speaker, we just have to think of a rive can. Borders, passports, unemployment insurance, the deficit. Everything is going wrong. After eight years, this Prime Minister has turned to failure everything that he has touched. He's insulting Quebecers even more by interfering in their areas of jurisdiction. Can the Prime Minister mind his own business and let Quebec make its own decisions? The Honourable Minister for Innovation. I think my colleague has amnesia because our government is the one that made the most significant investment in the history of Quebec. North Vault is an investment that's going to build for this generation and the next. As we do this, we're investing in daycares. We're investing in housing. We're investing in mental health. We're investing in Canadians. We're investing in prosperity. We're investing in Canada. We're investing in Can uh, Canadians, Mr. Speaker, and we will continue to do so. L'honorable député de Pierre Boucher, Les Patriotes, Verchères. The federal government is not helping to solve the housing crisis. It's dragging it out even longer. Ottawa could just transfer money for housing to Quebec. But the Liberals have instead chosen to impose conditions on the infrastructure program, supposedly to force provinces to build housing faster. But the result of all this is that in addition to slowing down building construction, Ottawa's paralyzing construction of infrastructure... They want to see doorknobs before setting up running water. Does the minister realize that his plan is putting the cart before the horse? The Honourable Minister for Public Services and Procurement. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The, min the member is right to highlight the importance of investing in infrastructure, in drinking water, in wastewater treatment. We announced $6 billion dollars an additional $6 billion to support municipalities to help build infrastructure that will help us in Quebec and elsewhere to build the 8,000 units we've already planned with the government of Quebec, whose leadership is essential. It's a contrast with the six housing units that uh, the previous Conservative leader achieved when he was in government. 
les, les patriotes versaient. Les libéraux ont du front tout le tour de la tête. Au lieu de se rendre... The liberals are shameless. Instead of making themselves useful, they've decided to be contemptuous and blackmail us with our own money, just like the conservatives did back in the day. It's not surprising, given the recent announcement. Quebec's housing minister made it clear that there's no question of Quebec agreeing to a number of conditions to get its fair share. Quebec's cities don't belong to Ottawa. Can the minister commit to guarantee Quebec its right to withdraw with full compensation and no strings? The Honourable Minister for Public Services and Procurement. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The member is right to talk about that the Conservative leader is insulting. He insulted Quebec's municipalities, including the people in the city of Quebec. We announced, with the leadership of the city of Quebec, the construction of 324 affordable housing units. 324 is 50 times more than all of the housing units created by the Conservative leader when he was the Minister of Housing. The Honourable Member from Fort McMurray, Cold Lake. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. After eight years, Canadians are struggling to make ends meet due to the Liberal NDP's crippling carbon taxes. They're all economic pain and no environmental gain. Just last week, the Prime Minister increased the carbon tax by 23 per cent, further driving up the cost of gas, groceries and home heating. The least they could do is take the carbon tax off the farmers who feed us, which would in turn lower the cost of food. So my question is simple. Will the Prime Minister axe the tax on farmers and make food cheaper for Canadians by passing Bill C-234 in its original form? Great question. The Honourable Government no, going to make this point. Bill C-234 was here, then it went to the Senate. Conservative senators threatened a bunch of other senators who wanted to debate the bill. The bill is now back in this House, and it is completely up to the leader. The Honourable Minister has 20 seconds left on the clock. Senators. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. It's rather impolite to interrupt the people answering questions, as the members of Prime Minister know. C-234 simply can be brought to the floor of this House wow. on the simple whim of the Leader of the Opposition. That member should actually talk to him. That's a good idea. The Honourable Member from dufferin calder After eight years of this NDP Liberal government, Canadians are well versed in their corruption. Sadly, it's worse. Bombshell testimony on Beijing's interference in Canadian elections. A senior Liberal disclosed top secret information to the then Liberal MP from Don Valley North that he was being watched by CSIS. Wow. This was a despicable breach of national security for Liberal partisan gain. And only very high-ranking Liberals would have access to this. A cabinet minister or a senior Liberal? Who is the person? Give us this Liberal name. Dirty. Minister for Public Safety. Mr. Speaker, we worked collaboratively with all the opposition parties last summer to set up an independent judicial inquiry into foreign interference. We've seen a number of weeks of public testimony, including this week. We didn't think, Mr. Speaker, in the terms of reference, we had to put a line that would say we should have the basic respect for the integrity and independence of the Commission process, not to comment on every day's appearances, but to let the Justice do her work. And we look forward to her report in this important issue. Well done. The Honourable Member from Dufferin Caledon. There's no decency or respect when a senior Liberal, either a Cabinet Minister or a senior Liberal staffer, disclosed top secret CSIS information for Liberal gain. It's, it's despicable. It gets worse. This compromised CSIS work. It put Liberal partisan gain over national security. And the Prime Minister must have known. When did the Prime Minister find out? When did he call in the RCMP to investigate, or were the briefing documents just a bit too long so he didn't read them? Yeah. Yeah. The Honourable Minister for Public Safety. <laughs> Again, Mr. Speaker, this my colleague, can, my colleague can repeat a series 
of allegations. We don't think that this is particularly constructive when a senior Court of Appeal justice is seized with this very matter, which is here, she is hearing evidence from witnesses and interviewing in camera all of the relevant officials, receiving all of the most classified documents. Why doesn't my honorable friend allow her to do this work and not continually repeat and interfere in the middle of her hearings? Honorable members, please encourage you to listen to the person who is recognized to have the floor. The Honorable Member, Donna Deputy de Sudbury. Canada continues to support Ukraine. We've provided military support and aid. We're working with our allies and our partners all throughout the world. However, we must recall that this is not the first time Russia has behaved like an aggressor towards Ukraine. Can the Minister of Foreign Affairs reaffirm our long-term commitment to Ukraine? Canada's favorite investment. The Honourable Minister for Global Affairs. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I want to thank my colleague for her important question because Ukrainians are on the front line of democracy. They're fighting for their freedom and ours. Putin has no red line. If he wins in Ukraine, he'll keep mm. going. That's why we have to support Ukraine for our security and that of the world. That's why we concluded a new agreement, a $3 billion agreement for its long-term security. We've been there from the beginning, and we will continue to, to be, for their, be there for them even after they achieve victory. The Honourable Member from Carlton Trail, Eagle Creek. After eight years of this NDP Liberal government, we see historic levels of corruption. Conservatives have uncovered a tangled web of chaos, collusion and cover-ups in the arrived scam scandal. Just the latest example of Liberal insiders getting rich. GC Strategies opened its doors when this Prime Minister took office. This place will make history when it summons GC Strategies to the bar to answer our questions. Why did the Prime Minister make these scamsters multi-millionaires? Yeah. Yeah. The Honourable Minister for Public Safety. Again, Mr. Speaker, because our colleague repeats something doesn't make it factual. She knows very well, Mr. Speaker, that the Auditor General has looked into these matters. Because you dodge Welcome questions. To parliamentary committee you review. Innocent. People have been available, including senior government officials, to go before parliamentary committee. I'm going to ask uh, all members, please, to uh, restrain themselves. Uh, there were a couple of very large uh, or loud interventions while the minister was speaking. It's hard for me to hear the, the answer, sometimes difficult for me to uh, hear the question. I ask all members, and I know I could identify the members, but they're honourable members. I ask them, please, to hold their comments back. The honourable minister has 20 seconds left on the clock. So Mr. Speaker, as I was saying, the Canadian Border Services Agency is conducting internal reviews on this matter. The RCMP are also looking into these questions. We have said that anybody who has misused or abused taxpayers' funds will be held accountable, and we look forward to these processes coming to their conclusion. The Honourable Member from Brantford Brant. Mr. Speaker, this Prime Minister is not worth the cost or corruption. In the past year, this government spent over $21 billion on outside consultants. Rather than helping struggling Canadians, he's focused on making Liberal insiders richer. It's no shock that the Liberal favoured GC Strategies, who pocketed $20 million for doing nothing on the Rife scam, was founded the same year that he took office. Will this Prime Minister commit to cutting all waste and corruption in the upcoming budget, or will he continue to get more Liberal insiders rich? Here, here. Here, here. The Honourable Minister for Public Safety. Mr. Speaker, as my colleague knows, the Minister of Public Services and Procurement, the President of the Treasury Board, myself as Minister responsible for the Border Services Agency, have already taken steps to reduce reliance on outside consultants. Mr. Speaker, we've reviewed and changed the process for approving these kind of contracts. We'll continue to look at everything necessary to ensure that taxpayers' money is well spent. 
and those people that are responsible for these decisions know that they'll be held accountable in the case of misuse or abuse. The Honourable Member from Brantford Brent. I hope the government holds itself accountable. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say that. The surface of the rot and corruption shit. in this NDP Liberal government. Their procurement system is seriously flawed and broken. For example, they paid KPMG, a consulting company, almost 700,000 taxpayer dollars to learn how to cut back on consultants. Oh. You can't make up this lunacy. They've learned nothing. The question is simple. In the budget next week, will we see a cut? Cut to all the corruption. The Honourable Minister for Public Works. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. As our colleague, the Minister of Public Safety, has said repeatedly, repeating falsehoods doesn't make those falsehoods true. What they should know, however, is that the Auditor General did table an important report just a few weeks ago, which found that rules were not followed by a few public servants. Fortunately, many of these rules have been updated, mm -hmm. and regulations and expectations around the use of those rules have been clearly commu uh, communicated to all relevant public servants. The Honourable Member from Vaughan Woodbridge. Workers in Vaughan Woodbridge and across the country have been clear, Mr. Speaker. The Sustainable Jobs Act is critical to ensuring they have the tools and skills they need to build up our net zero future, from greener buildings to electric vehicles to clean energy. The tens of thousands of conservative amendments on this legislation are designed to block this bill and block workers from getting a seat at the table. Can the Minister of Energy tell this House why, we're here, why are we here fighting for workers today? The Honourable Minister for not for natural resources and energy. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Today we are in this House fighting for workers and communities in Canada so we can create sustainable jobs moving forward, we will grow the economy, and we will fight climate change. Standing in the way of workers is the Conservative leader, a proud supporter of notorious anti-worker legislation, including Bill C-377 and 525. His plan for Canada is to cut investments, to let our economy fall behind, and to let the planet burn. Our plan will ensure we are building an economy where Canadian workers and Canadian communities will win, and we will vote as many times as it takes to get it done. The Honourable Member from Edmonton, Strathcona. Mr. Speaker, today I met with Mansour Schumann, a Palestinian Canadian who risked his life to report on the devastation and horror of the war in Gaza. Weeks ago, the Liberals promised to stop selling military goods to Netanyahu and to sanction extremists. As innocent children continue to die, they haven't issued export notices or announced sanctions. This is a betrayal of the hundreds of thousands of Canadians who want peace for Palestinians and Israelis. We need a two-way arms embargo and sanctions. How many more people will die before this government acts? Here, here. The Honourable Minister for Global Affairs. First and foremost, I would like to say that I've yes. talked to the mother of Mansur Schumann many times as he was obviously struggling in Gaza and we made sure that he could come safely back home working with the Minister of Immigration on this very issue. Uh, second, on the question of Israel Hamas and the war, of course we know that uh, the situation in Gaza is completely catastrophic. Uh, the violence must stop. We need a ceasefire now. We need to make sure that hostages are released. We need humanitarian aid going in. And the, 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 my colleague already knows when it comes to arms, we have not sent arms. The Honourable Member from Kitchener Centre. Mr. Speaker, it's been two years since this government committed $1.5 billion to build co-op housing across the country. Yet two years later, instead of returning to annual predictable investments in deeply affordable co-op housing, this one-time program hasn't even launched. Instead, last week we heard more announcements while thousands of shovel-ready co-op projects are still waiting. What's the point of making announcements if they're not going to spend the money? And when will the minister commit to these much-needed co-op homes getting built? The Honourable Parliamentary Secretary to the Minister of Housing, Infrastructure Speaker, and Communities. Whether it's co-op housing, whether it's missing middle housing, duplexes, triplexes, fourplexes, mid-rise apartments, that is the focus of this government, building more, dealing with that crisis in supply. This is what this government is seized with. In fact, I recently met 
with the federation responsible for co-op housing and its advocacy in this country. They remarked how happy they were with the progress that's been made. Of course, there's more to do, but lifting the GST off of that type of construction is something that I'd point to the member as well. There's a larger context here, uh, here as well to pay attention to. We're getting it done. We're getting that work done. We're going to see more building. And this comes to an end. Another I don't question think that's period. ever going to happen under the Liberals. Uh, if it would have happened, it would already be in place. All right, before they share a Nazi up in the gallery for the second time that we would know of, we're going to end the stream. Thank you so much for watching, everybody. We'll be back uh, tomorrow's Friday. Uh, maybe we'll be back tomorrow, if not on Monday Um at the same time, thanks for watching. On your way out, I'd like to encourage you guys to smash the like button, subscribe if you haven't already, and we'll see you when we see you. Bye for now.